Hi guys, welcome to Epic PC Cases. Today we're having a look at the Maximus 5G. It is a really powerful motherboard in a really small form factor. So, I'm going to remove this graphics card, this GTX 680, which will be in our next review. And uh, we'll have a closer look at some of the features. So, what we're going to look at first is the Go button. And the Go button allows you to load a personal profile that you like. So, if there's a really nice profile that you know that works, you can load that up, whatever happens you can just load it up just by pressing that button. And uh, it's particularly useful if you do a lot of overclocking and the overclock doesn't particularly work. If you reset the BIOS, you lose everything. But if you press the go button, it brings you back to that really nice profile that you like. What we've got here as well is the uh, voltometer sort of points. And you can check the CPU voltage, you can check the GPU voltage, DRAM, you can do the IO plate, everything. All the relevant voltages you can check. So that's a nice feature as well. Uh, being a Maximus board, it has four DIMMs as well. So we'll move across and you've got the MOSFETs here. Now this is an interesting heatsink because it actually features uh, two heatsinks, but there's only one set of MOF MOSFETs there. This is actually just a heat pipe. Um, if you do intend to air cool it, then it gives you a greater surface area to cool the whole sort of unit. And uh, this is just your standard I.O. plate and we'll move up across. And right here is your two X16 lanes. So being a mini ATX motherboard and having two X16 lanes, yeah, you get quite a fair punch. Next we'll have a look at this little sectioned off area of the PCB, which is shielded off for the sound unit. Now you have Supreme FX3, so that acts as your um, high quality sound for the motherboard. You'll also notice that to get that red strip, they've drilled LEDs straight into the PCB behind the motherboard tray, which is, you know, A plus for effort there. Uh, those familiar with the ROG series would know that they always give a start and reset button. So if you are doing benchmarking, it is particularly useful and um, they are quite nice buttons just to have there anyway. As we move across here in the center of our screen, right there is your BIOS chip. and. Uh, one of the things that this motherboard doesn't have that the bigger Republic of Gamers motherboards do have is a second BIOS. So pretty much if your BIOS crashes, just press the go button and away you go again. As we head around the final stretch of the motherboard, we've got this little display and that basically gives you a whole bunch of codes that you can find out in your book. Um, it'll tell you everything from um, pretty much what's going wrong and it'll tell you if everything's all right as well. So this is what let me know that I had a dead RAM module, which I would have taken ages to figure out. And uh, it is just a very, very useful sort of display. So they've been there for quite a while actually and uh, it's a really good addition to see on the motherboard. Another thing we're looking at is the uh, SATA 3 ports. So you get four SATA 3 ports and two SATA 2 ports and it's nice to see SATA 3 outnumbering SATA 2. And yeah, that's the board. So we've got our 24 pin connected and our 8 pin connected as well. And yeah, it's all looking pretty neat here. Let's have a look at the IO plate. All right, so nothing out of the ordinary over here. We've got your CMOS reset, your ROG connect, and your ROG connect port under these the four USB ports that you've got. And you've got another uh, four USB 3 ports. You got your high quality audio and all of your computer speakers out and a single ethernet as well. So, very, very nice. You've also got your HDMI cables uh, there as well. So your HDMI output. You guys asked me to do an overclocking, uh, like a beginner's guide to overclocking. And this is pretty much what this is for this motherboard. So if you do have this motherboard or any uh, Asus Republic of Gamers motherboard, then this will work. And if you've got at least a 2600K and at least some water cooling of some description, then you should be fine. So, this is how it works. Grab Prime95, which will be in the link's description below. That's this program here. CPU-Z, which comes with your motherboard, or you can download it, link's description below. You'll also want core temperature. Now, there are quite a few temperature applications out there. This one, I've just stayed true to. It is just brilliant. So, download that one. All right, so before we go anywhere, we need to get AI Suite, which comes with your motherboard disk, and you can do CPU level up, which uh, is your automatic overclocking tool. 
And, uh, but more importantly, what we're gonna do is go to update and Asus update, and we're gonna update your BIOS. All right, so what you should see here is update BIOS from the internet, download BIOS from the internet, and update BIOS from file. I downloaded it previous, so I had it on file, and you just click next, and that's how you update it. Very, very simple. The other way that you can update it is just going straight through the port, the USB port at the back here. And uh, very easy to do. So you don't even need a CPU in your motherboard to update BIOS. You just plug it in the USB stick and into your I.O. plate. And, uh, or you can do it when you're in the operating system, which is what I had done. So very easy. At this stage, I'm gonna assume that you've got all these three programs or you've at least stopped the video and downloaded them. Uh, in which case, you are free to restart your computer. So when you boot up, you'll have the UEFI BIOS, which allows you to use your mouse, and it's got all these nice little colors and graphics. And it's a very aesthetically pleasing BIOS to use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go load optimized defaults, purely because uh, we're gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna show you how to do this from scratch. So all the defaults are loaded, and uh, we're gonna go across, come into OC, whoops, no, well you can do OC profile which is automatic, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 4.6 and the CPU level up, we're gonna go to overclock tuner, we're gonna change it to manual, and you'll get 100, uh, which is basically your multis, and we're just gonna make it 44. See up the top there, it's got your speed, so you can actually obviously change it, so if you wanna go higher, you can go up to 4.5, depending on what you type. So ours, our basic clock speed that we're looking for is a very beginner overclock speed, which is 4.4 gigahertz. Very easy to do. We're gonna go into DRAM time control. At this point, uh, it's automatically got the figures in there. Uh, so we're gonna leave that. We're gonna go into CPU power management and we're gonna go to speed step, which is uh, terribly disruptive to overclocking and we're gonna disable it. Uh, the reason that we do this is particularly because Let's say you go 4.4 and your CPU is doing nothing, it's gonna show, it's gonna bump it down to like 1.6 or whatever it wants to bump it down to, which is not what we want. We want a constant 4.4, so we're gonna disable Intel's speed step. You're also gonna go into CPU voltage. Now you can see my default CPU voltage uh, is quite high. Uh, at the moment it's about 1.39 volts. Uh, my or on stock, it's around 1.2, 1.25, depending on how good your chip is. Uh, my chip is very not good. I've got a 2600K and it wasn't very highly binned and its default stock temperature was, I think, uh, the stock voltage was really high. I can't remember, I think it was like 1.28. Uh, and it's taking me, personally, uh, about 1.38 to get there, to get to 4.4. This will be completely different for you guys. But basically, let's say you enter in something suicidally high, then it'll be like red. Uh, if you enter in something mildly high, it'll be like purple. So it's color coded. It basically keeps you in check and it stops you, well, it doesn't stop you, but it, it warns you if you're putting something in ridiculously high. So we're gonna put in 1.3, uh, 1.35 uh, to get there. And we're gonna change our RAM voltage to 1.5, although this depends on your RAM. So check your RAM and see what your RAM is. Um, with the dominators I've got is 1.5 volts. Uh, other than that, you're done. You can change, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that you can you know, skew voltage and all that sort of stuff. You can change all of these if you're willing to get a more stable overclock, which you will if it's higher. Uh, but this is a very basic overclock, so we'll just keep it like that. And um, start a configuration, all this stuff here. You can change your boot, and uh, you've got your Asus Easy Flash, which uh, you can update the BIOS with without even having the CPU in um, the motherboard. So that is a fantastic utility, and you can save your OC profiles and your Go button file. This one, uh, before we looked at the Go button, and the Go button just allows you to click the Go button and it loads up a safe profile. So if you do go a bit crazy with the overclocking, you can just hit the go button and you'll be back to stable. All right, so we're gonna save changes and reset and we'll see if we can boot. All 
This is always a good sign when you see this and you see the starting windows. It's always really, really good to see that because it means that you're sort of halfway there. If you've gone a bit crazy, you'll just see blue screen of death or you won't even see anything. All right, so we booted, uh, GPU tweak has come up. Uh, that is the next video, the GTX 680. And uh, we'll be combining the clock we've just done with that GPU tweak to see how high we can get. And uh, I don't think we'll crack 11,000 3D marks, but I'm hoping to get really, really close. So we'll minimize that, that's the next video, even though we're filming it all now, and I do feel a little guilty for that. Click on Prime 95 which brings up your prime, and that just tests stability. And then you're gonna go CPU Z as well. And we're gonna open up core. So here, I'm not sure I'll zoom in so you can see that. All right, so core temperature is just basically giving us our basic uh, idle temperatures, which aren't wholly unusual for a H40 Corsair. And uh, 4,399, which is pretty much close to 44, which is 4.4 gigahertz. So we're here, we're here, but that's only half the battle. And I'll show you the volts we're using to get here as well, which is about 1.384, which is rather high for my CPU. Uh, for yours, it may be much lower. I've heard of uh, 2600Ks getting to 4.4 at 1.25, 1.28 volts. Uh, but mine is a just a terrible bin CPU. It's just, it's not good. So yeah, do take note that everyone will require different amount of voltage to get to this stage. Uh, so do play around with it. Don't go past 1.4, uh, but yeah, do have a mess around with your voltages and see how low you can go really. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in place large FFTs and just go straight okay, launch eight threads. And uh, if you want a rock solid sort of overclock, make sure that this goes for at least 24 hours and monitor your temperatures as well. So that is one way to find uh, stability. So that is what I use. There are heaps and heaps of these around. Uh, I've always used Prime, so that's just generally what I use. And yeah, that is how you get to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, it's a free gigahertz if you've got some sort of at least half decent uh, aftermarket cooler on your CPU and uh, free performance, who can sort of argue with that? So once this goes and it says, you know, pass, okay, and it runs for a certain amount and you click stop and it says there's no errors, then you're free to go about and make it your 24 seven overclock.